So Jason, 5G is rolling out in earnest right now in the U.S. and a lot of key global markets. There's a lot of architectural differences in this next generation of the network. So I'm kind of curious, based on your interaction with your operator customers, what you're seeing in terms of architecture and what type of challenges that might present. We're seeing a, a lot of small cell, a lot of macro, and a lot of in-building coming about um, with our customer base. It's it's ever changing. It's it's always on the move and we have to adapt to that. And Danny, I know Expo, you guys are engaged all over the world with different operators and uh, you know, same question really, what are some of the challenges with this new 5G architecture that are coming up, particularly from that uh, network assurance perspective? Sure, so we see the, the scale of deployment, so the cell densification, we're talking about a lot of deployments, um, so we're talking about, about 10 and 20 times more the cell side that we have today. So the fiber deployment is a, it's a big challenge and in terms of service assurance, for example, fiber monitoring, um, it's, it will be really important to make sure that the network is uh, ready for that 5G transformation. So you mentioned two things there and I want to kind of take them separately, but that first one is this idea of, of densification. You know, 5G's build is more throughput, lower latency, better reliability, better coverage. And to do that, you gotta deploy a lot of small cells, particularly if you're taking a millimeter wave focus play. So as your operator customers go through that deployment process, what are some of the hurdles that they're coming up against that they're looking to Expo to help them get over? All right, having visited a couple of uh, 5G sites, what we're seeing from the beginning is that the 5G deployments um, are downlink only, which means the uplink are um, using the 4G network. So the first problems that we're seeing a lot is that when a customer is complaining that they don't have those 5G services, it's because they're the problem. there's an issue with the like RF interference, PIM, on the uh, 4G network. So what's really important on the, in the first deployments of 5G is to test the 4G network and the 5G network at the same time. So 5G, it's this whole different thing. We're all familiar with the macro tower paradigm. It's far away, it's in the distance. It's not really that impactful, but with 5G to get to this reliability, coverage, latency, and throughput, you gotta come down to street level and build out these small cells. As you guys engage with municipalities and operators uh, across the country, what are some of the challenges that keep coming up? Some of the challenges, you know, from our standpoint is with the customer always wanting to be number one. Um, we come up, we encounter these challenges of jurisdictional issues, uh, permitting right away, uh, lane closures, um, uh, equipment delays, you know, you name it. It's uh, another factor is the resources. It's, it's getting, getting guys up to speed of what we're doing, the technology that we're dealing with, the training, the testing, you know, all that, it, it's, it's all encompassing, you know, it's, things that we deal with. So we talked a little bit about small cell densification and its role in 5G deployments. Uh, you also mentioned fiber. You know, as we see these new architectures, as we see this level of densification, we're getting deeper and deeper fiber in these networks. And I'm just kind of curious what that looks like from a testing perspective. Sure. So what we're seeing with those new 5G deployment, uh, what's happening is basically because of those new requirements, so lower latency, higher throughputs, and because what 5G bring with eCIPRI and new rates at 10 and 25 gig, basically that's making is that the first site that, that we're seeing those installations, they're all faulty from the beginning. So what will be really, really important is to start testing from the beginning and to get a result that is uh, right from, from the first time we, uh, we test. So what is gonna be really important, there's uh, many steps in terms of testing. We use at X4 our three-step process, so our fiber inspection, fiber characterization, and our eCIPRI or CIPRI testing. So it's important to do those tests in order not to delay the 5G monetization, basically in, in order to make sure that your 5G rollout will be, um, will be profitable and good from the beginning. I'm kind of curious, Danny, what you guys have seen on the, the validation front out here, particularly as it relates to the site-by-site -site basis. Time is of the essence, so what's Expo doing to help these crews move fast? Yeah, so basically um, field technicians, contractors, and strategic partners like NIS, uh, they require aut automated and intelligent tools to help them uh, troubleshoot and test their site to get a first-time right first time right result. Um, basically what we do is that we offer them those solutions in terms to help them save a lot of time and in terms of time saving we, it could go up to 90 percent of uh, time saving from troubleshooting the issue from the beginning. Um, also on top on top of that 
with the network transforming to 5G, it's going to be really important to be uh, efficient in terms of testing, as um, Jason was saying earlier. So that's why tools like that, um, while testing their 5G and their 4G network, will make the, make it easier in, ter- in their network transformation. Yeah. So Jason, maybe we'll just um, circle back to that point that that Danny made. Um, you know, validating a site quickly and efficiently is paramount to what your customers want. So maybe you can tell me a little bit about what you guys are doing at a field level to make sure that your crews get out to this site one time, turn it up, and it's right. From the managerial side, it's it's making sure our crews are efficient, making sure they're trained, making sure they're up to speed on all the technology that we're dealing with, all the procedures, uh, the customers' wants and needs. Um, if we're not doing that, it, it causes issues on the back end. It's You can't move on to the next site, the customer's not happy. You, you have to make sure all these things are in place before you can move on. And and with the customer trying to be number one in market, you, you have to put all that in place. So given the variability and the complexity that we see here, you're telling me that it's important that you gotta have strong front end planning and you gotta have the ability to do very quick validation and testing. Danny, how are you guys enabling that testing and validation step to get 5G out there more quickly? So, as I was saying earlier, most of our tests are uh, a one-button test and they're intelligent and automated tests. So, by doing that and offering that to our to the field technicians, to contractors, and to our partners, it makes it easier to troubleshoot and have a right result from the first time. Um, so, going with their 5G network transformation, it's going to be uh, really important to test from the beginning and making sure um, that they have clear and clean uh, sites before they bring it live to our to the customers. So what are the implications for tower techs? You know, I've heard a little bit about this. The demand with 5G is such that there's not enough trained technicians out there to put all these sites into service. So, I mean, what do you, how do you get around that? Uh, you stay up to date. I mean, as, as cell techs in our world, you, you have to evolve and you have to adapt to ever changing technology. Um, it's with testing you have to, to, to stay certified, you have to know what you're testing. Uh, if you don't, you can get left behind. And that's a lot of what you guys concentrate on, right? It's not just the testing and the validation, but automating that process, making it easier, quicker, more accurate, right? That's correct, yeah. That, that's what we do and that's what we want to help our partners to do. Well, it sure is an interesting time in wireless and I really appreciate you gentlemen taking the time to share your perspective. Thank Thank you. you.